and all. So welcome everyone to episode 35 Shark Attack Case Files. So today we're going to look at the perceived correlation between full moons and shark attacks. So you might have noticed in my other videos I include the, the data of the moon phase. And there's been people in the comment section of have, have asked like why that is and yeah there's a reason for it. It was the reason why I've always included it. So what I've done is I've done a bit of research on that and then tried to find an attack, another attack that I haven't done that, that, that happened on a full moon and then lo and behold one of the, the best attacks that's ever took place just so happened to be on a full moon that I haven't covered yet so you couldn't you couldn't make that up and that, that's like the infamous Shirley Ann Durden attack that you've, you know, if you're into sharks you would have read about this attack basically because this, this attack took place in South Australia just in here so we, we, we should be aware of this area on previous videos but yeah just in this bay here peak bay south australia so dive into some stats we're not going to dwell on this too deeply but south australia there's been 26 great white shark fatalities throughout the years yeah and i mean last attack 2022 attacks dating back 1839 all the rest of it so yeah we won't we won't dwell on this we'll just dive into it so yeah this took this attack took place Sunday March the 3rd 1985 and yeah Shirley Ann Durden 33 years old she was diving stroke snorkeling and she was attacked by a 20 foot great white shark this is a 6 meter shark so an absolutely massive shark time of the attack took place 12.30 just just past the, the point of, of, of uh, noon yeah, and uh, she was only in actually two meters of water, which is about seven feet of water. Uh, and she was about 150 meters, which is about 164 yards from the beach. And obviously, yeah, full moon phase, that's the, the topic of this video. Water temperature there was 66 Fahrenheit, about 19 degrees Celsius. And the attack was a, a fatal attack, uh, and it was a complete predation. And the, the narrative was, yeah, she was free diving for scallops with like a you know basic snorkel apparatus, just, just free diving air from the surface and yeah, in, in very shallow water, as mentioned. Yeah, and just to show you what 100 meters off the, 150 meters off the beach looks like, yeah, it just looks like something like this. This is where the attack took place. So in the scope of that particular bay area, she, she you know, in this type of scale, she was, she was very close to shore and obviously yeah, in in very shallow water so the the narrative is is that yeah shirley and her husband barry and another guy called keith coventry they were yeah scallop diving and they were on their way back to the beach to reunite with their friends uh, and their four children aged between five and eleven who were playing in the sand and barry was actually standing on a submerged rock about 10 meters or it was about 30 feet away from shirley when she suddenly cried cried out and then uh Keith Coventry turned around and he saw like a huge black fin break the surface and like a 20 foot shark and I have a two foot fin so the fin can't get it in shot but the fin the fin will be massive so so, so Keith uh, saw, saw this huge black fin break the surface and then Shirley was like lifted high sort of out of the water and into the air even in even in shallow water and he said there was some thrashing and some commotion and then the water just turned black it's obviously blood and then yeah Keith realized he she was gone and then frightened for, for Barry he was sort of, sort of he was sort of struggling to stop him swimming from his wife sort of held him back and the shark had actually in the initial attack bitten off both her legs clean off and sort of just swallowed them and then it quick quickly turned around for another pass and actually took her head and her arm clean off as well and there was just like the, the torso left and then boats actually quickly arrived on the scene as as the shark was sort of removing her head and arm and the shark just completely ignored the boats it sort of circled back around the boats one last time and then just took the remains back out into the deeper water of the bay so yeah absolutely horrendous attack and like i say it's a real infamous attack you'll find this on every top 10 list of uh, the most infamous shark attacks and the actual Port Lincoln fisherman said there was a huge shark had been seen in the area for like a month uh, and that, that it, it was possibly attracted to the area by offal thrown into the water from Wiseman Beach from local fishing companies but that's possibly conjecture but the following days the, the authorities done a more extensive search and all, all they ever found was like a single swim fin so the shark basically took everything and it was witnessed by 
another local fisherman just up on the cliff and he, he yeah he said the shark was way bigger than you know his boat which is about four or five meters so yeah just to just to just to sort of corroborate the size of the shark so absolutely ginormous shark yeah and then yeah like i said this this attack took place on a full moon and funnily enough there was actually a scientific paper written in 2021 by Rick Stephen Medway et al. So this guy's a associate professor of the Department of Oceanology and Coastal Sciences at uh, 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 LSU. And it, yeah, they performed this study, which is called uh, Shark Side of the Moon. I might use that for the title of the video. It's obviously a clever, clever play on words there. And they done a study to see if there was any correlation or are sharks, are, are shark attacks related to lunar phases and this study used the same statistics I use from the International Shark uh, database, basically the, the Florida Museum one, and they actually did find a correlation. So they basically said that there, there was a clear correlation. They they took like a fifty five year period, nineteen sixty to two thousand and fifteen, and there was actually a clear correlation between lunar phases and shark attacks. But then they went on to say that although the reason remains unknown. Uh, yeah, and then they went on to say in their conclusion to this paper, you can Google this paper and read the whole paper. It's not a long paper; it's like four, six, six or seven pages. But but they basically said that the results here strong, strongly support that that a moon face does play a role in the overall risk of shark attacks. And in the future studies, uh, are able to consider local and regional environmental conditions along with uh, lunar illumination to both understand shark attacks and forecast risk uh, may be improved. So. Yeah, so there's definitely some clear correlation there, but they, they didn't go into much detail in this paper of what, what why they thought that was. But one thing I looked at in this particular bay, so during a, a full moon phase, so when Shirley was attacked, a full moon phase, so obviously that's that, that's going to pull more water up, so you're going to have a higher higher tide. So when this attack took place, there was more water in this bay for sure so it was at a high tide and the, the maximum tide in that area it, you're going to get two two meters of additional water basically on an lat so i think what i'm saying is is that there would have been more water in this bay to give this shark a chance to get further up uh into that shallow water or give the shark more confidence and there's been other studies that, that can prove correlation between um, lunar phases and animal activity, basically. Uh, they're, they're, I mean, there's studies by National Geographic that f f uh, moon phases are well-established influence on on animal behavior, especially those in the marine environment, like oysters, zooplankton, like particularly oysters um, remain closed during full moon phases, stuff like that. There's loads of, um, loads of correlations, like the circadian rhythm of both animals and humans is is commonly known to work with like lunar cycles so there's all these different correlations um yeah but but what i think happened here or if you just take it on a basic level i think that the, the full moon in this case brought better hunting conditions possibly so the there was more water and access to the coastal grounds for, for this particular shark and thus more prey sort of pushed more fish into this particular bay at, at the high water or the full moon so yeah because I don't think this shark would have would have had access to that shallow water if it wasn't during the full moon cycle. Basically, that's what I'm getting at. So yeah, I mean, so perhaps that's one of the the reasons why attacks take place. More attacks take place during a full moon. But you, you might have your own ideas on it. So if you've got any ideas, feel free to uh, comment. But I definitely think that 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 Shirley was was killed because it was a full moon. Basically, yeah. Uh, there was definitely a correlation in this particular attack. That's my opinion anyway. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed that video. Laters.